Coming up in this video, we are touring a historic family-run wine cellar and sharing a day in the van life between a cemetery and a vineyard. Hello, we are Ben, Rebecca, and Lucy. We've shipped our 4x4 camper van across the Atlantic to start a new life in Europe. Welcome to our first chapter of European van life as we savor new experiences and flavors, camp in unique locations, and navigate traveling internationally during the pandemic. Well, good afternoon from the village of Amershwire in the province of Alsace here in Eastern France. We spent the night at a winery. So this here, where we're staying, is a farm stay off of the app Park for Night. And this was actually in all of our years. This is the very first time I have spent the night next to a cemetery it is a little weird a little creepy but it was uh, is all in all a very peaceful night so part of these farm stays it's very much like harvest hosts in the united states uh you go in and you do business with the farm and in this case we're gonna go have a tasting and i guarantee we are walking out with some wine hi there good morning afternoon yeah we ready to go wine tasting? I think so. We uh, had a baguette and some leftover chicken to soak up any alcohol so it doesn't completely obliterate, obliterate the rest of the day mm -hmm. after a nice session of computer club this morning. Yeah, All right. This is a very charming little village. I like it. This whole area is really charming. It is. And I don't know. We are listening to the bells that chime every... I think 15 to 30 minutes from that uh, church tower. This is kind of what it's all about, isn't it? Pretty much. Definitely. Very authentic feeling. Amershwire has a rich history dating back to Roman times, 869 AD. In the 14th century, the village was fortified. And while under the protection of the King of France, the town knew its golden age in the 16th century. Unfortunately, 85% of it was destroyed during bombardments in World War II, and Amherstwire has been reborn to what it is today thanks to the dedication of the community members. We really are entering a wine cellar. We keep going down. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is nice. This is the Riesling. Oh, Riesling. Yeah. This would be my mom's favorite. Our uh, host, Guillaume. Also, William, in English, <laughs> has uh, poured some wine for us. Riesling is better uh, sometimes with uh, fish, uh, mm -hmm. put in Alsace, you know, uh, sauerkraut. So this is the second Riesling. Okay. It's the same grapes varieties. Mm -hmm. The difference is the terroir, the, the, the ground, ground and the soil exposition. Mm. Too. Okay. So what you learned about wine and viticulture, you learned from your family? When I came from school, I don't say uh, it's wrong, uh, you have to do like this uh, right. to, to mix the both. Well, experience is equally as important as knowledge. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And every year that change with the, uh, the weather, mm -hmm. the climate, mm -hmm. and now it's, very, it's changing very fastly. So really? you have to adapt, uh, to adapt uh, each year. Uh, it depends because we have a lot of different grapes varieties. Some uh, some varieties it's okay, and some other one uh, don't like uh, mm. the climate. This is the Pinot Blanc. Do you see a lot of Americans coming through? Sometimes. Sometimes uh, in the summer, maybe. Never but with a car. <laughs> oh, okay. Never with a car from America, in particular, yeah. Let alone Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> but you come from California, but you uh, you live in Alaska. Oh, yeah. We were both raised in California, born in other parts of America. I was born in Kansas, and he was born in Minnesota. Okay. But we both. Uh, 
our families moved to California and we grew up there. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. after we married and I finished graduate school, we moved to Alaska and that was, okay. will be 14 years in April. We won in Alaska for the, for the job, the for the adventure work. of it. Adventure. Yeah. yeah, a life less ordinary. I always yeah. wanted to live there. My grandpa talk, took me there when I was a little girl, like eight. Yeah. I came home from that trip and I said, I'm going to live there someday. And everyone patted me on the head and said, aren't you cute? And I was 28 when we moved to Alaska. Okay. So. Now we're starting a little tour. The, uh, Guillaume was telling us about the uh, barrels and the history of the barrels. Uh, give back 60 liters of CO2. Oh wow! So for all uh, the winery, uh, that's the uh, And uh, you talk about the six piece. Yes. It was always uh, made uh, like a scary face to put away the bad spirit and uh, leave the wine in good condition and not turning into uh, vinegar. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, it's all a very old barrel. Mm -hmm. so this one is the youngest one from 1948. Oh, so you have the years on them. So this is your youngest before. barrel, 1948? No, the youngest. Yeah. The, youngest. Yeah. the youngest barrel, 1948. Now, what's your oldest barrel? Yeah, but I don't know exactly uh, the age because uh, it's not right on the barrel. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it should be from the beginning of uh, the uh, from the 19th or uh, the 20th century. Okay. okay. Wow. So like 120 year old barrels then. Yeah, approximately. Wow. So how long do you let your wine age before you sell it? You can. Uh, the wine can be aged for mostly of them for 10 years, mm -hmm. but uh, we sold all our wine year after year, mm -hmm. and it's for the customer who have to, to age the bottle. Age. Uh, okay. yeah. I can hear Lucy up there crying. <laughs> we still uh, distill uh, every year for the Gepos Chaminer and Muscat grape skin only. Okay. So after the press, we collect only we collect only the skin. Mm -hmm. We leave into a barrel during a few months, mm -hmm. and then we put the skin into the, the alambic, and so we distill uh, two times to have uh, an alcohol. And that's how you make muscat, you said? Muscat and mm -hmm. gibbous mm -hmm. I bet these are quite old as well. Yeah, this one is uh, old uh, like the house, so in the end of uh, 18. Uh, yeah, yeah, wow, what's well, an amazing uh, family heritage that you have here. We tried this one too, the Imschloss. Imschloss means uh, from castle, mm. because the wine, uh, the vine is grown and the castle uh, is made with stone and uh, it collects the heatness from the sun during the day. And by night, when it, when it's cooler, mm -hmm. it gives back the the heatness and the grapes uh, grape faster as the other one. Uh, give us some grapes. Oh. So after oh. the press, uh, is no more juice inside. Mm -hmm. Just the the skin from the grapes. Yeah. We put into a barrel. We put away all the air, mm -hmm. and uh, we leave the skin during a few months for fermentation. Mm -hmm. And then, for to extract the alcohol, we put into the alambic. We distill mm -hmm. two times okay. to have the tea. Wow! Now I understand. Okay, this is forty-nine percent alcohol. Very good against COVID. And, yes. <laughs> okay. One sip a day, and you won't get COVID. Well, if you can smell it, that means you don't have COVID. <laughs> That's a good test. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it was more fun than the, the nasal swab. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is unique. Yeah. Do you drink it straight or do you mix it with things? No, we can drink like this after a good meal. Uh... A very good meal. Mm -hmm. With the coffee, uh, you can put the bottle in the freezer too. It's very good. Wow. It's more uh, like oil after. Oh, really? Yeah. And, but uh, that didn't froze. 
or with mm -hmm. the local mm -hmm. cheese, you put some uh, small piece of cheese, mm -hmm. you add uh, some alcohol and you burn after. So the cheese bring the, the taste from the alcohol, but the alcohol burn and uh, the cheese will be liquid a little bit after. Yeah. And with bread, uh, it's pretty good uh, in winter. Oh my God. <laughs> we have so much to learn. So much to learn. <laughs> wow. Okay, two bottles of wine and a very unique bottle of gin. That's our halt for today. Thank you, Guillaume. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. We always like to thank our Outliers community for supporting production of these videos. You guys are the best. Click join on our YouTube channel for early releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more. Well, since we run our diesel stove for heat, during the winter months, it's a great time of year to slow cook meals on the stove because we're cooking and we're heating the habitat as well. We don't shy away from garlic in our household. And since we're parked next to a graveyard, I think it'll keep the vampires at bay as well. Shallot, what an amazing vegetable. I know red onions aren't necessarily like cooking type of onions, but they're gonna do the job. That's about all the carrot, we had left potatoes and mushrooms for the win. And then for spices, I have added some sage and poultry seasoning and a little salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna follow it up with water to make a broth. Give it a little stir. And we're just gonna let this do its thing for probably at least two hours. And winter is a great time of year to enjoy soups and stews. We also like making chili, but we don't really have the ingredients on board for that right now. So uh, chicken stew will totally hit the spot. You may have thought we were joking a little bit about vampires, but we did put on the uh, third of the Twilight movies. What do you think, Luce? You having a good day so far? Yeah, wolves that wear denim cut-off shorts and run around topless. Maybe your papa should try that. <laughs> Doesn't he own a shirt? Oh, look at that. Chicken stew. Well, I know with chicken you're supposed to have white wine, but we have this bottle of red from a store, not a winery but it's already open. Okay, bon appetit. Or should I say bon appetit? Bon appetit. Merci beaucoup. Well, mm, mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. All right, we are going to call it a night with a, another Christmas movie. Best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Thank you for spending the day with us. Coming up in our next video, in Europe, at least 11 countries have confirmed Omicron cases. Probably by the end of winter, almost everyone in Germany, it might be cynical to say, will be either vaccinated, cured, or dead. The COVID situation is escalating in Western Europe, and once again, we're on the run, driving 550 miles through five countries in one day.